Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to talk about a new feature that's available on Jealous. This is a custom firmware that works on most of the Linux-based retro handhelds that are available right now. And the new feature we're going to be talking about is local netplay. That means you can take two different handheld devices. They don't even have to be from the same company. As long as they're running the same version of Jealous, you can connect them to one another. It doesn't even have to be over Wi-Fi. They will literally just connect from one to the next. And the reason why this is neat is because you can play these offline. So for example, you have two of these devices in a car or on an airplane, you can now play two-player setup. It's going to be great for going on a camping trip or something else like that. Now, this feature is only going to work for the older systems, so things like Nintendo and Super Nintendo, and then also old-school arcade games, which I think are some of the best when it comes to multiplayer. As you can imagine, there's a ton of potential here, and so in this video, I'm going to walk you through the entire setup process, including some of the more nuanced connection things, like playing four-player Super Nintendo. Anyway, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, to start, let's talk about Jealous. This stands for Just Enough Linux Operating System, and this is a custom firmware that's available for most of the Linux-based handhelds. And if you're not familiar with it, I'll leave a link down below so you can check out some of its features. Now, if you scroll down a bit on their webpage, you will see a listing of all the devices they support. And there's quite a few here, but it's really gonna be mostly the Linux-based versions of the Ambernic and more recent PowKitty devices. In addition, they do have x86 handheld support, so if you have a handheld PC, it might work on here as well. Now, this video here is not going to be a full installation guide for Jealous, but one of my more recent written starter guides, this one here for the Palkitty X55, actually has the full instructions already written down. So I would recommend checking this out if you are just setting up Jealous for the first time, or if you'd rather watch a video of the process, I would recommend checking out my Palkitty X55 review. In this video, I do a quick summary of the entire installation process, which is very simple. It's a matter of flashing it to an SD card and then adding your games and BIOS. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to assume that you already installed Jealous on all your devices. So let's look at the four consoles I'll be using in this video. To start, I think it's appropriate to use the X55 since I've been talking about it so much. This is a great handheld. It's $90, but has some really nice ergonomics and a 720p resolution screen. Now the chipset on this is the Rockchip RK3566. It's not the most powerful in the world. However, it's going to work just fine for all the systems that support Netplay. And so this is going to be my primary handheld we'll use in this video and we'll refer to this one as the host machine. Next, we're going to use this one, the Ambernic RG353V. This also uses that same chip, the Rock Chip 3566, and this one is well suited for retro gaming. It has a 480p resolution display with a 4x3 aspect ratio, and it also has that classic Game Boy form factor. Next, we're pulling out another Ambernic device. This is the RG552. Now, this is an older device, but still one of my favorites when it comes to retro gaming because it has a very high resolution screen. And as a result, the pixel density here is super sharp and clean. I've made a bunch of videos about this one, I'll leave a couple linked down below. And then finally, for our fourth device, we're going to use this one, the iNeo Air Pro. Now, this is a full-blown handheld PC and much more expensive than the others. But I want to use this one here to demonstrate the fact that Jealous will work on some handheld PCs, and it's a great experience. On this machine in particular, I boot everything from the SD card, and I can play all the way up through Wii U and Nintendo Switch. And the nice thing here is if I ever want to dual boot back into Windows to play PC games, all I have to do is just remove that SD card. Okay, so first thing we want to do is update Jealous to the most recent version. This feature only came out about a week or two ago, so if you're using an older version, it won't work. Once you're already connected to Wi-Fi, go into the main menu by pressing Start, then go into System Settings. About halfway down, you'll see an option for System Update and select Start Update. This will let you know there's an update available and you can download and install it. And this process will take probably 10 minutes altogether because it's a pretty big file. And of course, make sure you're doing this with all your devices. They all need to be running the exact same version of Jealous. Next, we need to set up net play and then local play. First thing I want to show is that within the network settings, you can see that I'm not connected to Wi-Fi at all. And this is neat because if you have other Wi-Fi credentials in here, it's still going to work. It doesn't matter what you have inside. Anyway, let's go ahead and set up net play. And we're going to find this under the game settings menu. Once you're within here, you're going to scroll all the way down to the net play settings section. And this is easy. All you have to do is turn on the enable net play function. If you'd like, you can set up a nickname for your device. So that way you can tell the difference between them when you're connected. After that, you need to index the game. So you're going to scroll down to the bottom and select the index games function. 
You can leave this at the default settings and then choose start. Now I've already done this with the machine so nothing's going to happen, but basically it'll scroll through all your games and see which ones are netplay enabled. Anyway, once that's done, we now need to turn on the local netplay so we don't have to rely on Wi-Fi. To do this, we're going to scroll back down to the network settings section, and then below the Wi-Fi credentials you'll see the local netplay settings. And here you just want to turn on the local play mode, and then you need to set a local play ID. For the first device, you'll want to set it as number one or the host. And then for all the other devices, you're going to set it up to be clients. We'll do that here in a second. And really, that's about it. Once you leave the menu, you'll actually see a Wi-Fi icon on the top right. And it's not because this device is connected to Wi-Fi, but that it's pushing out its own network signal. Now you just want to go through and do the exact same process with all your other devices. You can see on this one, I actually just made up Wi-Fi credentials to make sure they would still connect. And then just make sure you've turned on local play mode, and then under local play ID, make sure it's one of the clients. So for this one, I set it to client number one. After that, you should see the Wi-Fi signal, which means that it's now connected locally to the X55. And really, it's that easy to connect them up. So let's go ahead and start up a game. We're going to start with Nintendo Entertainment System because this one does require a slight configuration tweak. And that is that the default core for Jealous doesn't seem to work well with Netplay. So instead, I would recommend changing it out to a different core. Let me show you how to do that. When you're in the NES menu, press the Select button and then choose the Advanced System Options here at the bottom. The very first option is going to let you choose the emulator. And for this one, I recommend using RetroArch FCEUMM. And again, make sure you do this with each of the devices because it is important they're all running in the same core. Okay, now we're ready to play some local netplay. We're going to start with Double Dragon 2 because this is a two-player game. Hover over the game, press the X button to bring up the quick menu, and then choose Netplay Options. From there, on your host device, you're going to select Host a Netplay Session. This is going to start up a game and then also broadcast that signal while it waits for a client to connect. On the next device, press the X button again to bring up the quick menu, and under Netplay Options, you're going to choose Connect to a Netplay Session. From there, it's going to launch the game as well, but then also look for another device that's playing that same game. And just like that, they should connect up no problem. Now, the way that Netplay works on older consoles is different than how multiplayer works today. For example, with the NES, when you did multiplayer, it was two controllers hooked into the same console on the same screen. Because we have two different screens going, what we're seeing instead is a duplication of the screen for both devices. That means that player one will control player one and player two will control player two, and they'll see the same thing on each of their screens. There might be a tiny bit of lag when you're looking at them side by side like this, but you have to remember that the players are not going to be doing this. So there might be a little bit of a delay right here, but it's really not that bad. And one other thing I forgot to mention earlier is that in order to get this to work, you also need to be using the exact same ROM. So in a nutshell, make sure that you're running the same version of Jealous, the same emulator core, and then also the same game ROM. If one of those things is not in sync, that's usually when people start running into problems. Okay, now let's do it again, but with a different system. We're going to try Super Nintendo this time. And it's the exact same process. I'm going to press the X button to get into this quick menu. And then under Netplay, I'm going to host my Netplay session on my Player 1 device. And then on the Player 2 device, I'm going to connect to that Netplay session, again using that exact same prompt. What will generally happen is Player 1 will start up first, and then you'll see Player 2 syncing up, and then you're good to go. Now Donkey Kong Country is a very unique game to play in two-player mode. There's a contest and a team. I usually would play it in team back in the day. And the way this works is that each player is assigned a character. So for example, player one is Donkey Kong. So as he's playing through, Diddy Kong really can't do anything as he just kind of watches everything unfold. However, if player one chooses to swap out and let Diddy Kong take control, then all of a sudden player two is now in control and it's kind of neat. In addition, if one of the players dies while they're in control, then the game is going to start blinking the other character and then once they press the A button, they then resume control. So this is a pretty nice way to get through a harder level. If one of the player dies, then it isn't going to mean it's the end of the level, it just means the other player needs to take up that mantle. It's also a great way to play co-op, because if you get to a hard part that you don't want to do, maybe player two will do it for you. But the honest truth is, when I used to play this with my friends, we used to cheer on and try to get the other guy to die so that we would be able to start playing. And I'm definitely not saying you should play like that, because that was kind of a dirty way of playing it back in the day, but that's just kind of how the 90s were. Now, in addition to using home console systems, you can also play multiplayer on arcade, and I think this is one of the best ways to do it. It's going to be the exact same process here, but again, just make sure that you're using the exact same ROM between the two. In addition, make sure you're using the same emulator core and that it's a match with your ROM. So in this example, I'm using MAME 2003 Plus as my emulator core, and I'm using a ROM set that is a match for that as well. And same process here, where player 1 will be player 1, player 2 is player 2, and each of you will need to press the select button to insert a coin. 
And really that's about it when it comes to setting up two player gameplay. You're gonna be able to do this with any game that's compatible with two players on any of these older systems. Essentially the cutoff is PlayStation 1. So any of those systems that are older than that, you know, the 16 and 32 bit systems, those all should work just fine. Now, another thing about multiplayer arcade games is that many of these cabinets were set up for a four player experience. So let me show you how to set that up. And honestly, it's exactly the same as setting up two players. You just add two additional client devices. So on my RG552, I've set it up as local play ID 3 or client 2. And then for my iNeo Air Plus, I've set it up for player ID 4 or client 3. Now the same rules are going to apply. You need to make sure you're running the exact same version of Jealous, the same emulator core, and the exact same ROM. For this example, we're going to use X-Men, but running with Final Burn Neo. And the process, as you can imagine, is exactly the same. The host device will start up first, and then everyone else will connect to it. And really, the setup is as simple as that. You just need to make sure they're all set up as being client devices and they connect to the host. And as you can imagine, it's basically impossible for me to try to play four players with only two hands, but you get a gist of how this is going to work. And like I mentioned, there are a ton of different four-player arcade games that are going to be a lot of fun with this kind of setup. The biggest hurdle here is going to be making sure that you're using the correct ROM set. Not only does it need to match the core, but you need to make sure you're using a ROM that is four-player supported. Now, in addition to four-player arcade games, it is possible to run four-player Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis depending on the game. For example, here is the NBA Jam Tournament Edition, which is a four-player multi-tap compatible game. I think there were about 70 of these altogether with the entire console. And it's pretty easy to set these up, but it does take a little bit of configuration on your end, at least just that first time. And the configuration only needs to be done on the player one device. All you have to do is press the Select and X button to bring up the RetroArch Quick menu, and then scroll down until you find the Controls section. From there, navigate down to port to controls, and within there, you'll find the device type. And here you need to change the player two controls to multi-tap. This will tell the emulator that instead of just a controller plugged into the player two device, you have a bunch of them. And I recently talked to the Jealous development team, and I think they're actually gonna turn this on by default for player two, so you may not have to make this configuration. It might be set up for you already. Either way from there, just restart the game and then connect your other three controllers to it. And it's as simple as that. All the other three controllers will now register with player one, so you'll be able to play four player games. Now, personally, if I was gonna play NBA Jam Tournament Edition, I would play the arcade version just because the graphics were a little bit better, but all the same, if there are certain Super Nintendo games that you want to play that weren't available in arcade, then this might be a great fit. Now let's do the same with the Sega Genesis, and it's a very similar process. Again, on the Player 1 device, you want to go into the Quick Menu, and then into Controls, and then under Port 2 Controls, you want to change it to Mega Drive, Joypad, 3-Button, plus 4-Way Play. And of course, if the game supports a 6-Button layout, that's also an option. And again, that's it. You might have to restart the game, but after that, you can connect your other devices to it and you're good to go. Now, there weren't a ton of games that supported four-player gameplay on the Sega Genesis. I think there were about 40, maybe 45 altogether. But the nice thing about these is that many of these were exclusive to the Sega Genesis. For example, Gauntlet 4 was only available on the Genesis back in the day. And I think another series of games that would be really great with a four-player multi-tap like this are going to be the NHL games on the Sega Genesis. In fact, most of the multiplayer games on the Sega Genesis were sports games, things like FIFA, Madden, and NBA Live. Now again, as you can imagine, this is complete chaos, me trying to play NHL with four different players on four different devices with only two hands, but I think you're getting a pretty good idea of how this setup is going to work. Now the last thing I want to show off is link cable support, which does work for both Game Boy and Game Boy Color. This one does require a special emulator core, so we have to go back into those emulator settings, but this time we need to change the RetroArch core to TGB Dual. And again, you want to do this with both of the devices that you're going to be using with this link cable setup. Now, we'll start with the Pokemon game, but we'll talk about this more in a moment. For now, I'm going to host my Netplay session here on the Paukity X55. And then on my Ambernic RG353V, I'm going to press the Select button within the Game Boy menu, go into the Advanced System Options, and then change my emulator core to the TGB Dual. And same process here, we're going to press the X button to get at the quick menu, and then under Netplay Options, we'll connect to a Netplay session. Now the Pokemon games here will connect absolutely no problem. I did a very similar video to this on the Mew Mini Plus, and it's the exact same process. However, one thing I noticed is that on Player 1, the save game will load, but on Player 2, it won't. And I'm not really sure what's going on here. I've been trying to figure out the configuration to make this work, but at least as it stands right now, I'm not able to load both of my save games. And as you can imagine, I tried all of the different options here, you know, different 
save games, different games, and then even different devices. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to figure out how to sync up Player 1 and Player 2, where both of the devices are able to load their save game. So unless we get a fix for this at some point in the future, I'm not able to figure out how to trade and battle Pokemon between these devices within Jealous. If somebody does figure it out, I'll leave a pinned comment down below. So if you are looking to play Pokemon games, check out that pinned comment in case it's there. Now the silver lining here is that Game Boy Link Cable works absolutely no problem if you have two games that don't really require a save game at all. One of the best examples for this is going to be Tetris. If you wanted to battle somebody in the original Tetris, you can totally do that because it doesn't require a save game. And it'll be the exact same process that I just showed to set all this up. And really, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to show off how easy it is to do local netplay. And I think this will work best with 8 and 16-bit systems, as well as older arcade games. In particular, I love the fact that we have local netplay available, which means that you'll be able to play this no matter where you are. As I was making this video, I kept thinking about all those road trips that my family used to go on back in the day. And back then, none of us had any handhelds, including the Game Boy. But man, can you imagine if each of us had one of these? And we were able to play four-player games while being stuck in the car in the middle of Oklahoma. And the other great thing about this is that Jealous kind of unifies this experience no matter what device you own. So if you've got a Pal Kitty or an Ambernick or even an x86 handheld, you'll still be able to play multiplayer with your friends. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below and tell me what kind of games you're going to be playing with multiplayer setup like this. My first thought is always going to be beat em up games, you know, Final Fight or The Simpsons, but I'd love to hear what you plan on playing down below. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.